Is any questions? I know this is the this is the success of the conference. We don't you are not having any questions. Thank you very much. Actually, <laughs> if there's no question, and then we go to lunch. <laughs> yes, yes, please. please. <laughs> it's not success at all. Okay, not complete success. Yes, sir. Please. Thank yes. you, sir, for your nice deliberations. Yes, yes. Uh, although the bending is <coughs> is given after the insertions, but it seems that the abutments which are looking outside the bone into the oral cavity, they are not parallel to look at. How do you manage the path of insertions during the trying or even for the insertions? Mm, yeah, I mean, you. <laughs> The implant, the longer the implant is, the, the more the more elastic is, is the implant. You see, it's, let's say it's a 26 millimeter implant, it's rigidly anchored up here, but, but this, this gives you some elasticity, so you can, you can manage to, to get this in. And the next option is, of course, that you, that you grind the head. I mean, you, you increase the parallelity by taking uh, one part of the head off, I mean, in, in a lengthy way. You cut like this, or you cut like this, so the, the head itself gets more parallel in, in the end. Yeah. Okay, with with little bit of the elasticity of the material, it and the goes bone, in. and the bone, okay, mm -hmm. and the bone. So the upper jaw bone is more elastic than the lower jaw. So in the lower jaw, you you have to bend more uh, towards parallelity than in the upper jaw. This is the reason, sir. Whenever actually we are getting the calls and they want to buy our system, and this I had experience of uh, 10 years, 20 years of conventional implants. I have placed more than 5,000 implants, but I say actually. Please attend just our one basic course. Because in basic course, what is happening? We are doing, we are teaching from the start to the finish. Because really, when we do the conventional implant, we are dealing all with the rigid implants. So it's unthinkable that how actually the process is going to get fitted. But this is also because of the elasticity of the bone. Like, for example, if you are, if you are good in conventional implants, you know that when you are placing an extra maxillary zygoma implant, if with the conventional, conventional extra maxillary zygoma implant, it always has a bit of elasticity, actually. Okay. So this is the case is there, sir. So that's why we say we are going to sell our kits only. Even you are very much experienced, you are senior to me, but do a basic course so that we, we it's like a spoon feeding by, by us, actually. You have to start from A to Z, actually, then how we are completing, sir. Okay, yes, sir, please. Uh, yeah, yeah of, of, of course, there's also angulation adapters. You can cement an angulation adapter onto the head of the implant. So this, this creates angulation 15 degrees or 25 degrees. And it, uh, it depends, of course, on the experience of the treatment provider uh, with which angulations he can cope. Um, basically, this is a <laughs> the question that, that is answered by the dentist technician. Um, and you can talk maybe to Jura Mitroshenko. I don't, um, I don't see him at the moment. He, he gave the lecture yesterday, uh, the dentist technician from Moscow. And he tends to say, if he makes a bridge for me, no need to use angulation adapter, no need to do anything. I will put anything in. You know, regardless how this parallels, I don't care. But there are doctors uh, for, for whom he works. And there he really has to do angulation adapter, individual angulation, double angulation, everything. Because he knows this doctor simply never gets anything in that is only is slightly disparallel, so it's you know it's a question also of the of the order, you know which which implant to, on which implant to get it in first, and it's simply experience. No? I mean I don't care too much about remaining disparallelity. <laughs> sir, uh, my question is regarding a full arch or full mod. Here, sir, uh -huh. uh, do the number of implants per section counts, or it should be equal, symmetrical? Are the implant per uh, the implants per side? Yeah. No. We don't have to be a symmetrical or no, number of equal quantity. If you, I mean, a minimum, I'd say, per side is four. And, uh, I mean, best to put 10 in the upper jaw, but sometimes it's not possible. Sometimes even I manage only four, then, then maybe I will put six on the other side. It doesn't have to be symmetrical. No. Only the prosthesis needs to be symmetrical on each side. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah, the prosthesis, is, this is the road. I mean, this is the guideline for the mandible. No? Thank you, sir. So, is there a possibility of uh, doing a ridge split and putting a uh, rough surface implant? I, I don't understand the rough surface PCS. No, no, no. Curious, curious. A rigid splint. Is split. Ah, the ridge split. Ridge split. I don't know. I, I, I don't do that. I mean, no. why you want to do that? If, if the problem is on the palate in the upper no, no, jaw? No, 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 no. Uh, remember, uh, Dr. Vivek, uh, we had this uh, girl 
who is underdeveloped and even a three with a three uh, millimeter KOS we had a failure. So maybe in one of such ex exceptional cases, you know, as a rescue, uh, because that has failed twice, which is very unusual. <laughs> okay, fine. No, I don't do rich splits. And if, if there's no bone in the upper jaw, like I, I showed you the cases with a knife. Uh, knife at, where are you? <laughs> I don't know. There's, there's now BCS 2.7, which is very thin, so you can use this one. Yeah. Uh, sir, uh, for the dubroterigoid implants, uh, you mentioned we need to stay between the two fissures. Uh, the lower fissure is uh, relatively easy to uh, imagine, but the upper fissure, do we have any clinical landmark which would suggest that this is probably the level wherein the upper fissure would be? No. No, on average, the, the height of bone between those fissures is around 11, 12 millimeters, and the width also. I mean, you, you, you have this kind of square, this football field to hit. <laughs> <laughs> because, uh, sir, uh, somebody who starts afresh would always uh, tend to make an error on the lower side rather than uh, making an error on going the upper side. So, anything which is no. say, uh, yeah, I mean, you, in you, relation you, to the body you, you, of the you, you can palpate the lower fissure, and this, this gives you the direction for the whole procedure. Okay. Uh, no, sir, it's, uh, I'm talking about the direction in the supra inferior. Uh, Height. I mean, uh, yeah, the fissure. You palpate the fissure. When you see it on the panoramic picture, then you, then you then, then you know how it is on the picture. Then you you use your finger. I mean, you you palpate distally uh, over the end of the of the maxilla, and then you you it either goes up, and then you feel that the sphenoid bone is up there. So then you can verify that how is the situation in the reality compared to the picture, or you go distally and you you just hit it, or you you can feel that it's very long. This is it. Um, so it's an it's amazing. I mean, sometimes doctors really struggle with this implant, and some doctors do, do just leave the course and just do it. You know, so they, and I always say the the putting a tube repterigate and learning the Russian language is the same. You you can't learn it. You have to do it. You have to speak Russian. It's impossible to learn it. <laughs> so I have gone through the articles. Some of the articles they have told actually what the what doctor your concern is. Sorry, your concern is so wherever the root of the zygoma is there. The, the superior aspect of the pterygoid mesh of fissure is just exactly at the level where the root of the zygoma is. <coughs> mm, probably yes, but, but uh huh. Yeah, but uh, this is not. The, I mean, doesn't orient so well. I mean, if you if you are, I mean, you are maxillofacial guy, so, so anyway, you have no problem. But if for the others, if you if you extract the upper third molar, you, what you can do is just take the 40 millimeter drill and just do some drilling. You know, to to, to get some experience, the patient will not notice it. <laughs> I mean, everybody has to contribute to science, you know, also patients. <laughs> uh, sir, yesterday in Dr. Virendra's uh, uh, session, uh, we were told about the mylohyoid and their, their ridges. And uh, wherein you mentioned that if you have a mylohyoid just placed very, very superior, that is almost at the crystal level, uh, your life becomes easier. Now, uh, knowing that the mylohyoid ridge is not too thick, uh, how would you have a lingual engagement into the mylohyoid ridge in that case, wherein the, uh, the level of the mylohyoid ridge is fairly superior or almost, almost crystal? Well, about, I'm not so concerned about the level, but about the thickness. Of, of, of course, if atrophy continues, continues, then sooner or later the mylohyoid ridge is gone, especially if the patient had uh, dentures or I mean, fixed on some so telescopes or something, then sometimes, the, the, I mean, you, you can see that there was an undercut, <laughs> but it's gone. But in that case, maybe we need to go uh, have a buccal approach rather than the lingualized uh, then osteotomy? You need, then you need CT, uh, yes. Uh, okay. mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. The rescue procedure. <clears throat> well, it depends on the, on the available anatomy. You have to look again at the, the panoramic picture. If if uh, if the bone is crushed because you kind of drilled two three times and you missed it and and so.